Hey, fellas. So I just want to do uh, a quickie episode on uh, fixing the monitor over here. It's this monitor that burned out. These are Asus monitors. They're 2011, 2012. I used to have four of them because it was broke. I had to sell one, which I just hate. Anyway, um, this is the setup I use for the YouTube channel and doing editing and everything. And, and these are just great monitors. Like I said, 27 inch. It's an older Asus model. I forget what model it is. If I get a chance, I'll go peek at the back, but um, and probably put that in some way. But it really doesn't matter because they're 2011, 2012, and they just have so many inputs on them. And I have a matching set. <clears throat> they balance well. They're pretty fast. They were two millisecond response time. And recently, you know, for the past two years since. Well, I started YouTube about three years ago, and for the past two years, as I really got into it, so much of my old equipment has been burning out, and a lot of it I just can't afford to replace. Um, so I figured I would just start a, a segments on uh, and a folder on the equipment that I use, fixing it and upgrading it. And in this case, I'm going to show you guys uh, what I did, quick and easy, to fix a monitor that fried, burned out. It was a capacitor, which is commonly the issue in. I'm not talking about a monitor that goes out of tolerance and starts doing weird fuzzy lines and weird stuff and the color is off. We're talking about it wouldn't come on and usually that's in the power supply section. So we're going to go in there and fix it. I'm going to show you what I did to fix it, kind of upgrade the capacitor and just no money because I don't have any. So this is just stuff that I have laying around. I don't do anything with electronics anymore, but I was trained in it. I did work in it many years ago and I've always been a fan of it, even since the time I was a little kid. But I, I don't have... I, and like two years ago, I also burned out, or maybe a year ago, I burned out my, my good meter. And uh, even though it was fuse protected, somehow or other, I screwed it up. It was getting old, but this is what's been happening. So I guess at some point in this folder will be all the sort of trials and tribulations and the bonus stuff that for my equipment that I've upgraded and had to fix. So let's get started on this video and I'll show you a little bit about what I did to get this monitor apart. I'll show you a bit more about that towards the end, putting it together, which is just the reverse of getting it apart, and what I did to fix it. So, I, like I said, you know, probably don't throw them out, and if you're somebody that is maybe getting into the hobby, you know, people throw them out all the time, and, you know, TVs, computer monitors, <clears throat> for some of these flat screens, it might be worth just poking in there and just be careful and try not to electrocute yourself. So, let's get started. This is the one that's burned out, so we're going to be taking a look at that later. Um, let me get all this stuff set up first. I cleaned up a little bit in here. It's still not done, but I'll clean as I go now. All right, so I got the monitor that was over to my right up set up over there for now. Really crap. This one's set up here, and I got this little LED TV scepter. What a piece of junk. But I managed to get this monitor apart. And these are really nice monitors. So here is the base of the monitor here. And then over here, here is the stand and what have you. This is easy to take off. This is the screen. All in beautiful shape. And right away, you can see, and hold on, I'm going to get in your way. So right away, see this cap? It's bulging. So it's no good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of this. It could have damaged this uh, rectifier here. It could have. But... We could test that. I don't have any meters anymore. Everything is dying on me, literally, and I don't have any money. My guess would be is since it's I don't see any hard burns. This is dirt. We'll clean it off. Um, probably just get some new caps. This cap and a few others. We're good. It, the problem is in the power supply. All right. You can see this dirt on it. We'll wash it off. We'll check the driver board, but I don't think there's anything in the driver board that's an issue. Um, yeah, all these caps look good, okay? Notice there's some heating over here, but that could be from anything. It could just be staining, um, and I, we don't see anything. I don't have a schematic for it, but we can get component, um, and you don't see any diodes burned or anything. You would see that. That's just dirt. That's mostly just dirt. Happened to come in through a vent is what that really is. We'll blow all that off. And I'm going to replace this one, which is probably the same as this one. I'll look close to 25 volt, 1,000 uh, microfarad. Is that 1,000 or 100? i got to look close, fellas. 
So here's something interesting. Here's an old Elna, 25 volt, 1000 microfarad, right? It's just bigger. And I have a bunch of these. I have three of them, so I could fix my monitors. What we could do is solder pigtails on them and then test it and see if the monitor comes back on. And if it does, right, at least we'll know because you'll get a power switch here. So we'll have to solder this in and then screw it back down so it's grounded, blow everything off, and put a dab of uh, hot glue over in this area. And that way it would work fine. And it's a good way to test it for sure. So I'm going to give that a shot. Let me heat up my soldering iron. I'll get to it in a bit. I'm not showing all the work because I'm all verklempt here today. But we soldered on here. So it's, it's more, you know, as near as I can tell, I don't have the tools I used to have. But I used my magnifying glass there and I got another one around here somewhere. So we'll flip this over. Okay, and we'll reinstall it. I did blow it out. And I think we're okay. So you see here, I just want to make sure this is okay. All I did was just a little bit of hot glue. We don't need a lot. And you see, I just made a pigtail. Okay, and it goes right over there. And we know where the positive and negative is. All right, and let me flip it over. Everything looks fine. Let me just wipe out in here a little bit. Flip it over, screw it in, and then we'll plug it in just to see if the power supply starts up. Because it really doesn't need a monitor, I don't think. I don't see why it would. And, of course, we took out the offending piece. And you could see how it's bulging. All right now, there might be others on their way out. I tested this capacitor just with my ohm meter. Back and forth, right, in the beep section. One side to the other. It'll beep and it stop. And then flip the leads, and then it'll beep and stop. That's all I can do. I don't have the capacitor tester now, so. But it should be all right. Now, that one looks like it might have gotten a little hot. It, it could have taken out uh, this rectifier here, but it's a switching uh, transistor. But I don't see anything else wrong with it. Let's give it a shot. All right, I've got it plugged in, but it's not plugged into It's plugged into the pigtail, all right, the power pigtail. And then I'll plug it into the wire, right, the outlet um, extension cord. And I got my glasses on, just in case. But all we should see, right, it might pop, right, who knows. It's already broken, so, all right, let me plug it in. Okay, so we don't have anything popping. Now I'm just going to press the button, and we're going to look to see if the light comes on. And I'm not getting anything, so probably something else burned out. Should have seen some power. All right, I'll be right back. The plug wasn't in all the way. You see that? Okay, so that light is on. Now, if if we had the monitor in, it would fire. It should fire, and we should see the ASUS diagnostics. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug it. Yeah, this cord just was kind of st stuck in there. It wasn't really going in deep enough. I'm afraid to put a lot of pressure on the chassis. Let me clean off... So that, that's good. Let me clean this off proper. Let me get on over here and neaten up and blow everything and make sure everything is, is absolutely clean. And then I'm going to reassemble it and I'll show you a little bit about that. I want to just be real careful with this. I'm going to put a little bit of soapy water on this rag and kind of just get it real wet. But more on the rag. And then I'm just going to spend a minute, fellas. This is just some Dawn detergent. And you can see it's pretty creamy. Uh, that's all it is. I'm super clean here. Right, for me. See all that? Just kind of spend a minute, fellas. Let me, let me do this. We'll get this side cleaned off. And then on the face, a fresh clean towel. Fresh clean, you know, micro microfiber. Or these are the painter's. I like these. These are really nice. I like the painter's, you know, lint-free. It's just this light oxidation. A lot of what's on here is dust, but because everything is, is uh, electromagnetic, so to speak, what happens is you get ionization, and it leaves a very particular... Yeah, look at that. It's still pulling. It leaves a particular layer of thin gross on it. If I didn't show... A lot of the soldering and everything, fellas, like I said, I'm kind of out of sorts with the monitors being broken and everything. 
and I'm getting tired and but you should know how to solder um, you don't have to be really good at it practice with a couple of wires um, if somebody wants me to do a soldering demo I will see it's still pulling stuff off alright let me get some Windex on it and then we'll flip it over to the other side now there's just a bezel that covers over this so this is normally what I do just some good Windex and you can see I got fingerprints all over it but you know we could re-clean it again I have to clean the other monitors again I, I constantly do that see all the junk because there's a bezel here these are very tight bezels some some guys actually remove that was a thing back in the day these monitors were really good you know gaming high-end monitors for their day two millisecond response time and they have uh, HDMI inputs DVI inputs display port inputs um, and a VGA so it's it's like you could connect anything you wanted to it um, but what some of the guys did was remove even more of the plastic bezel and there's a way of doing that of course I don't need that right we don't need that right that's good enough but yeah I mean the bezels are very thin on these so I don't know why any it was a thing you know I think some monitors had a little bit more of a bezel I keep them clean but you know, I work in a shop, right? Basically, I live in a shop. And it's been hard maintaining my equipment over the years. Very difficult. All right, we'll be back for the assembly in a minute. So she loads into the back plane first. And we just need to find out where we are. Okay. She goes... This way. Okay, there's a connector on this side, and then there's a connector up top. Okay, there's a connector up top there next to that black tape. And so, this is not easy to do. Try to hold them up like that with your hands, and then just I can reach in there. And uh, I don't have my monitor or anything on, so I can't see what I'm doing on the camera. But it wouldn't matter anyway because I'm so focused on trying to get this connector in. So we got that connector in. Yep, I heard it snap. It's in. And we'll do the top connector. It's like a little banjo blade connector. And it kind of snaps in as well. Yep, I snapped it in. See? probably see a little bit in there I don't know if you can see it um, I'll raise you up yeah you could see a little bit of it we'll turn a little bit of light on too All right and now there's your little speakers up top and so now we just need to just kinda lay it down it goes in once you got it all lined up and there's two screws on the bottom I'll show you that All right just leave that that down here is fine and it needs to come over a little bit more that's it so that sides in okay and then I gotta put the two little screws in like I mentioned that you use your spudgers or what I used and you just have to pry up it's all snaps all the way around so I found a corner and I just kind of twist it a little bit and then you lift straight up on the bezel on this model some models you don't lift on it these by the way these screws were loose so it was not grounding properly um, if th this is this stuff has to be grounded so these screws were loose here and I'll try to make sure that I can see it but since they were so loose that could cause of power issues it's a uh, you know we always ground to the chassis here and here okay now what we want to do now we want to check it okay so before I put the rest on I want to do another test let me set up my power plug is in and let me connect it to the extension cord all right I see light Asus see I just saw it. 
Okay, it just came up base suit. Let's see, display port, no signal. So it's doing its test. So it should be working, all right? It doesn't see anything, so the light is going to stay like that. Um, and now I just shut it off, okay? And you should see it again. Blue light, Asus, see? All right, so it's basically, it's working. So let's put the rest on. Let me discombobulate it and just shut it off. So now what we have to do is locate this. So just be careful. I want to start off over in the area where the switches are and so that I can get it lined up properly. And you can see all the clips, you'll see them all the way around. Um, it's really, there's nothing spectacular about it. It's almost kind of cheesy. So we're just kind of straddle everything and just get everything lined up before I start pressing things down. See there, it's starting to go. Okay, there we go. All right, we're done. All right, so when you pry, I just went in the corner. You need a spudger. I, I wound up using this one. This one was a little bit better, and I found I pull up. You, what a lot of people describe is you take a clean, uh, either a terry towel, towel or, or something like a lint-free, and you grab in the corner, and you stick your fingers in underneath, and you try to get it to come up, and it'll come up. Right? You might distort it a little bit, and then once you get it up, we can twist with the spudger and lift and twist and work your way around. All right, now I can put, now my model might be a little bit different than yours, so we're all clean back here for the most part. I'll clean it one more time, and I'm going to put back um, the rest of the assembly that holds it up. Mine's nice. Um, they had two different assemblies. Mine's like this, okay, so it's actually adjustable, so you can pivot it and tilt it. Let me clean this up. I'm just going to wipe the back one more time and Excuse me. I'm going to screw all this in. I got white paint on it when I painted one of the cars that came in. And look, here's another spot where moisture must have got on it. Something got wet. So let me take care of that and we'll test it in a little bit. All right. I actually took it back apart again because it, it, I didn't think it was working. So, it, I, you know, once you do it once, right, it flies apart, really. Um, I'll enclose some more information on that. So I put this monitor back. Notice how it's got this darkness around uh, the outside. Um, I forget what they call that. I, I can't think. It's getting late. You know that silhouetting? What the hell do they call that in photography and stuff? Back up. Um, I'm going to want to color calibrate, and but that's going to have to be tomorrow. We'll clean up a little bit more. And I think there was one monitor that I think I have it set to DVI. I, may wanna, I might want to see if I can make a, a change on that. We'll see. This is very sensitive. ATEMs are very sensitive, right? They only, they display a very high quality 1080p output and the frequency that they operate and everything there. It's one of these things where um, you got to, not every monitor will work, right? These monitors work. So that's actually an output from the ATEM. And believe it or not, that other piece of crap that's over there, uh, as crappy as it is, that Scepter, Schepter. Right, it would it would accept it, but a lot of people have some issues. There may have been some updates on the ATEM for that, but so far so good. I'll sit down later on and uh, fool around a little bit and just kind of recalibrate because I was fooling around with that early. But these are such high quality. They're so crisp. They're so clean. They're real, really nice 1080p monitors, and just as you can see, they're just really nice. You got all these setups and everything. Um, there's still some around, and of course, the newest stuff is really good if you're willing to pay the money. So not having that monitor is a problem, especially since now I just set up four monitors and now I'm trying to figure out how to use four monitors. There's a, cool th a couple of cool things I can do, and I also use it for recording um, in here in the shop slash studio. So it, having it broken was like, oh, crap. So I just wanted to show you guys real quick. So I went in there and I fixed it. And just to inspire fellas, some of you fellas, out there that I, I was, I've been wanting to collect a bunch of monitors, you know, neighbors throw them out, whatever. And of course my daughter always gives me, you know, 
a hard time. What do you need that for? What do you bring more junk for? You know, and my friend Liz always says there's going to be roaches in it, which, you know, she's been right. You know, microwaves and toaster ovens you shouldn't bring in. But, you know, people get, you know, they get it, bugs and spiders and sometimes roaches. And, and they like to crawl into these things. I mean, I mean, they do lawnmowers. I, I don't even like to bring them in here until they've been washed because of stuff like that. All kinds of manner of things live in stuff. So... I just have not been had the time. Or I don't even have the tools anymore to do a lot of electronic stuff. So I figured, well, I really need this monitor. So what I wound up doing was I opened it up. And uh, it's actually not that hard to open up one of these monitors, believe it or not. And I replaced the capacitor that was in there. It's very common for a little caps like these. I know there's no real light on it. I should be able to see it. It's a little capacitor. You'll see them a little bit. I'll, I'll run a quick video on it. So uh, 25 volt, 1,000 microfarad is a common size. And I used to collect a lot of this stuff. I used to was into it. So I actually had one, but it was a bigger one. Same thing out of an audio amp and a better quality and capable of handling more current, which is probably why this little guy burned out. But these monitors are old. They were really good monitors when I bought them. Um like a 2011, 2012 or something, and they've been so good to me, and they just work so good. They, they look really good. I mean, I don't know if you can really see it, but they're so crisp. They were gaming monitors, but they have a lot of inputs in the back, and I could plug all kinds of different things into them. Um, and they're matched. So you don't really want something that's not matched. So I plugged this guy in. I had to make a pigtail for it, and I'll show you that in a little bit and test out very common power supply capacitors and like see some of the these are the big ones and you can see these big cans right that says uh the frankenberg says um there was a bad batch of capacitors in the last 10 years it probably has been uh, because they've been changing the manufacturers you know where they've been made um but this is what i use this is an elma and they're still in business so this is probably this guy here, this guy is probably old. Oh my God. Uh, I might have been in my 20s or something when I glommed this. I have three of them, so probably the other two will break as well because they're probably coming to that age when these things start to wear out, the top starts to bulge, and I'll show you that in a minute. All right, so that was, that was one of the segments from a live show I did. Check out my live show if you guys want to come down and hang out. That's basically what we do. I'm always got some kind of presentation, and of course I veer off into any tangent uh, that, depending upon who's you know who's in the audience and chatting and what they want to talk about and what they'd like to see. So the nice thing about having equipment like this is that I can literally veer off into any any you know on a live show it, it's live, right? You know, videos that I do that we all do are contrived. And that's what we put up on YouTube. We figure them out what we want to do and we contrive a video. But the nice thing about the way I do a live show, I think, is that I can get distracted and turn on a dime and start looking up something or playing somebody else's YouTube channel and videos or whatever. And because it's multimedia here with all this stuff, right, it's easy to do. And I can talk to the people in the chat and hang out with them. And if they want to talk about something other than what I have as a presentation, usually what I'll do in a live is I'll put out a presentation. And then somewhere in there, over it's like three hours usually, right? We'll start looking at all kinds of other stuff. So these monitors are really, really helpful. I've got another one over there, which is my confidence monitor, which helps with recording and, and you know, not just the live show. So Saturday night, usually between eight and nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So it's this. I'm actually recording this now, uh, months later. So the monitor burned out sometime in the winter, and this is almost the end of the summer. It's still going strong. I have two more of those capacitors, so in case these two go out, right, I can have a match set of crazy fixes. And that's it, fellas. I just wanted to show that. And uh, I know some of the fellas in the live, they knew exactly what I was talking about, and we got into it there. And uh, so it was fun to see. A lot of people are into this kind of stuff. And, you know, it's good to know because things are just getting so expensive, and you want to try to extend the life of the stuff that you have. Honestly, for what I do in my YouTube and even in the editing and everything, I'm really happy with these monitors. Would it be nice to be in 4K and everything? The problem with that is 
I've looked into it. You need everything in 4K. And then you're going to need the bandwidth to upload it. And you really need to justify it. So, you know, maybe one day I'll have one bigger monitor that's in 4K. And then somehow these will be off to the side for doing other things. But, you know, I'm not successful like that and quite yet. And hopefully one day I will be. And we can explore those options then. I'll see you guys on the next episode, and eventually I'll have more in a folder of all the kind of weird stuff I do to my computer. There's a lot of good updates in there, too. Some pretty cool stuff I'm working with. So I'm using some very, very fast hard drives, and um, it's a really cool old E-Series Intel processor that was really expensive like 10 years ago. And believe it or not, it does a really good job because I overbuilt the system when I initially built it and went for the bleeding-edge technology, all of which I can't afford anymore. I'll see you guys in the next one.